Hello and welcome. You're watching Market IQ. Now, the RBI uh, MPC has announced its decision, and it was broadly uh, along expected lines for the ninth straight meet. The MPC decided to continue with a status quo on the key, uh, the benchmark lending rate. That's the repo rate. It's been retained at six and a half percent, and that's with a four is to two majority on the stance as well. They've continued to maintain a status quo. Uh, we did. Did see slightly hawkish comments come in from Governor Das. Uh, he did say that uh, you know, uh, without price stability, uh, it is going to be hard to sustain growth. Uh, and he did explain the need to continue to focus on inflation for the time being. The MPC may look through high food inflation in the event that it is transitory. But given that we have been in a period of persistent high food inflation, that can't be done. That's what Governor Das had to say. And he did add that this is important to prevent second round effects and spillovers and to preserve gains for monetary policy. Uh, what was also new in today's policy was some tweaks that we saw to both the inflation outlook as as well as the outlook for GDP growth. While uh, the uh, forecasts were retained for the full year for FY25, we did see some tweaks for uh, Q1 and Q2 quarters, Q2 in case of inflation and Q1 in case of GDP significantly. Uh, but uh, to discuss uh, everything that transpired in the MPC and post that, I'm in conversation with Radhika Rao, senior economist at DBS Bank and Kaushik Das, Chief Economist, India and South Asia at Deutsche Bank. Radhika, hi. Thank you so much for taking time out. Pleasure to be here, Pali. So, you know, to begin with, uh, I'll start with the obvious. What were your takeaways and what caught your attention uh, at today's policy and the press post that? Uh, sure, thank you. Uh, I think the interesting bit uh, was that the central bank was meeting against uh, the backdrop of what has happened in the market action in the past one week, uh, more so, you know, late last week and early this week, uh, when markets really experienced a meltdown across different asset classes. Uh, and I think there were the noise that was growing on U.S. potentially slipping into recession. That means, uh, you know, everybody was trying to take profit on all the gains that was seen, especially in the equity markets. Uh, and that, you know, the market pricing for Fed had really swung on the other side, uh, which is that they are going to cut and cut fast. Now, meeting against this backdrop, obviously, uh, you know, all the observers are looking at what that kind of a pricing means for emerging markets. Uh, you know, we, we notice in some of the ASEAN countries as well, uh, the central banks coming out and making uh, different comments on where their own policy is taking them. Uh, and from that angle, I think the RBI basically stood its ground. Uh, I think there was not really much of a change in what their view is, I really think it's, again, a local versus global uh, point of view, which is that domestic reasons uh, require them to be more cautious, require them to be, uh, you know, much more guarded in their policy approach. Uh, and I think that's what the governor mentioned. So I, I think the interesting bit was they weren't really swayed by what's happening outside. Uh, of course, what Fed does, you know, where the dollar goes are all very important elements. Uh, but the timing of the rate cut um, you know, it's going to be completely dictated by what happens domestically. Uh, and I think that is what we saw transpired in the, in the uh, you know, guidance today. Uh, so uh, while um, I think there were not even any shades, if anybody was looking for some shades of dovishness, I think that didn't come through at, at all. Uh, if anything, I think that there's a 60 basis point, uh, you know, a revision in the 2Q fiscal 25 inflation number, uh, which is again telling you that, the profile very much is still 4% plus. Uh, so we're not really trending towards, uh, uh, you know, a below 4% or going towards the target. Uh, overall, I think pushback on two things, pushback on the fact that uh, RBI doesn't need to really react to what's happening globally insofar as domestic considerations matter. Uh, and that, you know, the timing will be basically dictated by uh, what inflation does. And of course, core inflation will not get as much importance as headline inflation. I think that was the other part, point uh, that the governor was quite clear on. Right. So, and like you've mentioned, we did see a fairly significant revision, upward revision to the forecast for inflation for Q2. We've gone straight from 3.8%, that was the expectation, even up until the last policy, uh, to 4.4% 4, 4 for Q2 now. Uh, and given that, and while today the government, the uh, RBI, sorry, has retained the forecast for the full year, 
Do you think there are chances of a revision uh, to that figure as well? What's the rest of the trajectory looking like? Um, you know, honestly, you know, the, the quarterly profile revisions, in fact, leaves the full year a bit above 4.5%. It probably leaves it at about 4.56, so rounding, you could take it to 4.6. Um, but I think what is likely in this quarter is just not, so this is a July to August quarter. Uh, it's not just a July to September quarter. It's not just, uh, you know, vegetable prices. Vegetable prices are very important and those have been still proving to be quite sticky in July. You can see a bit of a cool off in early August, uh, but not significantly. Uh, then you've got um, ta telecom tariff increases that have happened as well. The central bank also spoke about milk price adjustments uh, that have happened. Uh, all of this still waiting to feed through uh, to the price pressures. And I think that's behind the significant um, you know, revision in the uh, 2Q fiscal 25 inflation number. Our own forecast is for the quarter is a bit lower. It's about 4.1, 4.2%. Uh, but, you know, like many of the risks are still feeding through. So the trajectory overall can still be maintained, uh, you know, in and around 4.5%. Uh, I would personally see at least a 20 basis point upside risk to that, especially if, uh, you know, July to September is closer to 4.4. Thereafter, we have a point of 4.3 and a 4.4 number again. So a bit of an upside to the full year forecast. Um, but largely at this meeting, at least the RBI has maintained um, with just making quarterly changes um, to especially the second half of uh, fiscal 25. Uh, I mean, starting from 2Q all the way to four quarter. Got it. Okay. Uh, Kaushik, uh, hi. Thank you so much for taking time out for us. So, you know, along with the uh, revision that we've seen in the inflation forecast, we've seen a modest revision to the growth forecast as well, while the central bank has retained its forecast for the full year at 7.2%. For Q1, we've seen a modest change from 7.3% that was being anticipated until the last policy to 7.1% now. Uh, I do want to understand, and the government, uh, sorry, the governor did say that this is primarily because of updated information on certain high frequency indicators, which show lower than anticipated corporate profitability, general government expenditure and core industry output. What is uh, your thought on the change to forecast? Do you think there is a risk of a downside revision to the forecast for the full year as well? So, hi, uh, our own forecast for FI25 is 6.9, so it's slightly lower than 7% and lower than RBI 7.2%. Now, we know that all these data are, you know, kind of very difficult to predict given the distortions to, uh, you know, the seasonality that has happened from COVID and then you have the GDP deflator problem, then the difference between GDP, GBA, so it's all over the place. But even after the downward revision, what RBI is kind of indicating is that growth will remain above 7% for all the quarters, including, you know, April, June of 25. So they're pretty bullish on growth compared to, say, market consensus. Uh, I think market consensus is about 7% this year. And then next fiscal year, market is at somewhere between 65 to 7 whereas RBI has kept it at 7 So they're more bullish on growth, but... April, June, they have reduced it because of corporate sector profitability, government expenditure probably being lower because of elections at that time. So, you know, they have adjusted that, you know, in the decimal point somewhere and kept the 7.2% growth forecast. Uh, now, one key element of all this is what is going to happen globally. Uh, it looks like the global cycle in US is turning. The labor market has come, the data has come weaker and it may continue in the coming quarters as well. So there can be a knock-on impact, not just because of domestic factors, but because of external headwinds as well. So we have factored that all in and taken a conservative estimate of 6.9 for this year, whereas RBI is more optimistic uh, based on domestic as well as global outlook. Now, time will tell over the next few months how things play out, as Governor Das said, that we just got only one data and you know we are yet to see more data from the US to kind of make up our mind what kind of slowdown we can expect. Uh, but, you know, we are seeing global cycle turning, markets reacting viciously. Uh, so when things change, you know, you never know things can change very fast. And, you know, global cycles normally tend to be synchronized, maybe a few one quarter lag here and there or two quarters, but uh, we'll see how that goes.
right okay uh, so radhika coming back to you now you know uh, we like koshik to mentioned uh, we are seeing a turn in the global cycle weaker than expected data coming in from the us uh, even as recently as a few minutes back right governor das did reaffirm uh, that global trades holding up the latest estimates coming in from international agencies uh, are looking at better global trade conditions but uh what are you making out of it at this stage is it still a wait and watch mode or are we clearly seeing some downside risks to india's merchandise trade and possibly maybe even services yes yeah, certainly i mean um, you know our we do observe that our goods trade composition um has changed right it's been undergoing a change at least for the past 2 3 years uh, you're seeing much more manufactured products Uh, making up the export basket rather than just the labor intensive ones um you know you've seen electronics ex uh, ex shipments for example it's still quite small but the share is growing uh, then you've got of course the usual um, you know ones that are in the top which is the project goods engineering goods and so on and so forth so the portion to our mind uh, including petroleum products so in our mind you know th that composition is very favorable you know it makes our exports performance much more durable um so so that is one thing and the other thing is of course services exports have been doing very well again for the past 2 3 years um but if you would just just talk about the software part of our exports um you know those are certainly uh, much more beholden to what happens globally uh, you know 60% 65% of our shipments go to our um on the services side is is uh, beholden to us and canada for that matter uh, so of course growth there if it slows down our base case is not for a recession uh, our uh, base case is still that it's going to be slower growth for sure the fed is surely prepping for rate cuts uh, but does it need emergency rate cuts unlikely does it need to you know cut fast and cut furious unlikely so we are still in the camp regardless of uh, the volatility that you saw that us is certainly on a slower path or, or rather than a slow down uh, but not recession uh so going coming back to our own service exports certainly if if us growth is going to be slow you're going to see a fall back um you know it's going to be impact on our own service exports as well and net net i would think that the what we are seeing from the region as well uh, is that uh, countries that are uh, which have electronic shipments semiconductor related components uh, there is a bit of stickiness they're doing uh, relatively well uh, but countries which don't have that as a major export basket and their more commodity exporters actually they're experiencing a bit of a slow down uh, so from india's point of view i would think um, the exports uh, performance should, should should still hold up commodity prices are weaker uh, you know so that's helping our own uh, mix uh, but on the year we're going to see still about uh, you know 18 to 20 billion monthly trade deficit uh, which might see our own uh, current account for example slip into a slightly wider deficit than we saw last year uh you know which was at about 0.7 0.8% of gdp uh, we have about more than 1% of gdp current account deficit going into fiscal 25 not very big when you see you know when you put uh, history into perspective uh, especially 2013 2014 uh, but still a slight negative so to answer your question yes i think our goods and as well as services exports are uh, in some ways beholden to what happens to global trade um, but depending on the composition you know some parts will do better some not uh so we are uh, expecting a slight deterioration in the uh, current account balance uh, for the full year okay all right uh, and uh, with that my colleague vishwanath nair is also joining us with the key takeaways from the mpc presser vishwanath right well we so uh, what uh, came through this entire press conference uh, that the rbi governor had just held uh, with reporters was that uh, there is a need uh, to look at food inflation uh, closely whenever you're having a rate decision that is being made by the mpc uh, remember that a little while ago the topic of food inflation had come up where uh, people were suggesting that maybe food inflation needs to be removed from uh, the uh, the framework the monetary policy framework because anyway the mpc's de decision on rates does not really control food inflation so it doesn't matter uh, if food inflation is high or low uh, that shouldn't come in the way of rate decisions but uh, what the rbi governor is pointing out uh, specifically is that food inflation is an important measure to look at uh, it is also one of those points which really truly affect uh, 
uh, the uh, average household in India and therefore their expectations of inflations are uh, sort of moving according to how food inflation uh, evolves over time. Uh, so there is no way that you can remove food inflation from the equation, that's what he's saying, but maybe the 46% uh, weightage that it has uh, in the entire CPI basket, that uh, not entirely sure whether that there will be a review or not. There's a process on, so we will see what comes out of that. The other point uh, which stood out from the uh, entire discussion was with respect to banks and their uh, move towards retail deposits. Now, banks have not been very successful in attracting a lot of retail deposits. What the RBI governor is repeatedly telling them is that people are moving their funds into other alternate investment avenues. Banks need to uh, sit down and come up with innovative ways to attract these deposits uh, to ensure that they leverage their large branch network and attract these uh, retail depositors to come into the banking system. And that's the only way that the banks uh, can uh, support their entire uh, credit growth cycle. So two major things that uh, popped out for me. The first one was uh, the emphasis on food inflation and the second on how deposits are key for any bank to grow. Uh, so, you know, Kaushik, uh, coming back to you, first of all, I do want to ask you, what did you make of the governor's tone today? Did you think uh, it was slightly more uh, hawkish than one would have anticipated going into the policy, especially given uh, global central banking and where it's headed? And also, uh, in extension to that, uh, given today's policy, how does that change your expectation for the rate cut trajectory going forward for India? Yeah, so a couple of points. I would say on the you know margin, uh, the tone was a bit hawkish because the insistence on inflation and bringing it down to 4%, all that remained. And, uh, you know, the debate about whether we should target core or headline RBI governor made it very clear that uh, RBI would be kind of, uh, you know, continuing to look at headline inflation because for normal people, what matters is food inflation and food inflation feeds into, you know, inflation expectations. So when you have a mandate of targeting headline inflation and if it is driven by food, so be it but you have to keep on doing it, otherwise you might lose credibility. So that point was made, you know, uh, in a very, uh, you know, in a hawkish manner. And if you see uh, what they're saying about the inflation forecasts, it's looking like it's going to stay at 4.4% even in April, June of next year. So uh, the inflation forecast is not showing 4% anywhere uh, in the current, you know, kind of next six to nine months. But that doesn't mean that RBI cannot cut rates because when RBI thinks of cutting rates, it will not cut just by looking at the current data. It will look at the next two or three quarters data ahead. And at that time, if you think that inflation is going to get aligned at 4%, uh, you can then start cutting rates. Uh, look at Fed. Uh, I mean, the US inflation has not come down to 2%, right? But if they feel that it's on a path to achieve 2 to and half percent over a period of time, then you start you know, giving the rate cuts from today itself because monetary transmission takes some time uh, uh, you know, to affect the real economy. So, so uh, it's a question of not what inflation numbers you're getting right now, but say over a year's, uh, year uh, from now, where are you seeing inflation? And if you look at RBI's inflation forecast, January, March of 26, uh, RBI is looking at inflation coming down to 4%. So when you come, you know, in the next few quarters and you decide what you should be doing, you're not going to do uh, the policy decision based on just today's data. You're going to take into consideration what things will be uh, two quarters or three quarters from here on. The other thing is the real interest rate. Uh, if they work with a, you know, upper band of the real interest rate of 1.9 or 2%, then there's no question of rate cut if you're getting an average of 4.5% inflation. Uh, but if you work with the lower range, uh, if data changes and you're okay to work with the lower range, I think there can be a possibility of 50 to 75 basis points rate cut. If the Fed is going to cut, say, 150 basis points in this cycle or even more, RBI can deliver half of that 50 to 75, therefore, is a possibility. Uh, but the timing and the frequency would also depend on how the data is panning out over the next few quarters. Okay, all right. Uh, Radhika, coming back to you. So, you know, another uh, 
aspect that the governor focused on, apart from his comments on food inflation, uh, he did on multiple occasions say that there is need for banks to take retail deposits uh, more seriously. Uh, so I do want to understand from an economic perspective going forward, uh, do you think that if retail deposits do not catch up and credit growth might hence take a little bit of a hit, is that a downside risk as well to the economy outlook or the GDP growth outlook for the year? Uh, certainly, I think this is, um, you know, while the benchmark rate has been kept on hold uh, since, well, probably February of last year, uh, there have been a lot of other macro prudential measures that have been taken, right? And, and you've seen uh, when when the banks, I think the regulator was looking at the bank credit growth breakdown, you were certainly seeing a big pickup uh, in, you know, uh, not a, I wouldn't say significant uh, in weightage in the overall credit basket, but nonetheless, they were seeing quite strong pickup uh, in uh, unsecured credit. They were also looking at personal uh, loan growth, uh, as well as loans being given to through banks to uh, non-banks. Uh, so for those particular pockets, uh, they, they come in with a timely action of wanting to put high risk weights, um, making sure, and I think uh, the deputy governor at the press conference did mention that some of those measures are actually taken fruit. So you've seen some of those segments actually moderate, but it hasn't really fallen off very sharply. You're seeing the year-on-year -year growth moderate. Uh, so macro measures wise, I think there's been timely action taken wherever they felt uh, that there could be potential bubbles or potential sources of uh, you know, concern down the line. And the same thing, apart from the RBI, the, the, the securities regulator has also been mentioning uh, about some, some market action that is worrying them. Uh, coming back to the RBI, I think from the bank's perspective, this is not the first time they have mentioned about it. Uh, I think in the run-up, you have seen the governor speak up about it at various occasions, uh, that credit growth uh, sh could, should be strong, so the reliance should not be so much on wholesale deposits, but should be on retail deposits. Uh, and we, we see kind of a change in the savings behavior um, of households as well, which is a bit uh, going towards financial assets after a long time, and not so much, even in financial assets, is going much more towards uh, mutual funds. Uh, while the governor did reiterate that, that it, it does not mean that you know he does not promote for people to put money there, uh, but money should actually go into retail deposits. Right. Uh, so it's a very thin line. I think they have mentioned time and again that they, they don't want to uh, take uh, force banks to take any um, you know, untoward action, but certainly look at making it much more attractive for, um, you know, for uh, people to have households to put more money right. into deposits. So net net, I think lower credit growth, uh, if it's going to households, if it's going to industry, imparts right. a bit of a negative impulse, certainly on growth. Okay, all right. Uh, Kaushik, uh, back to you. We have time for one quick question before we wrap up. Uh, but I do want to quickly ask you, and given, uh, you know, the discussion we've been having on food inflation, we've recently also, uh, this has been on the works for a while, right? We do know that the government, uh, uh, the panel under the statistics ministry is likely to bring down uh, the weightage of food inflation uh, whenever that does happen. Uh, is that going to help solve the problem we have been seeing of, uh, you know, food inflation and the volatility there uh, constantly sort of, uh, you know, uh, because of which we have not been seeing headline inflation actually on target. The last time we saw the headline figure close to target or on target was actually back in 2019, I believe. So quick thoughts on that. And also, what are you going to be watching out for going forward? Uh, uh, of course, apart from the geopolitical scenario as well as uh, uh, data coming in from the US. So the thing is, uh, this is a time-consuming process, as the governor explained. So they'll be continuing to do analysis and surveys. And uh, this is not something which is going to change in the next three months or six months. Uh, and this will take time. And unless that changes, as of now, whatever data or weights are there and whatever the way, uh, whatever the composition is, RBI is going to work according to that. And also the inflation targeting framework is not going to change uh, from headline to core inflation anytime soon. So I, I think it will be you know, business as usual for RBI. And that's why the governor pushed back today explaining why we should still continue to target headline CPI inflation. There could be difference of opinions, but as far as markets are concerned and the way RBI will be conducting policy with the MPC, I think nothing changes. They continue to focus on headline. And you know when that weights change, probably there would be some change in the inflation uh, and you know it could come down if it is driven by food but at that point of time if it is driven more by core inflation it could also go up so we don't know how the 
you know, uh, trajectory will look based on how things play out at that point of time. But at this stage, nothing will change. So you have to base your expectations for RBI policy based on the current inflation trajectory that RBI has given using whatever weights and calculation that they have. What are the things to watch out for going forward? Obviously, the biggest, you know, uh, mover would be or the thing to look out for is the U.S. economy. They have held up pretty well till now, but now there are telltale signs that the labor market is slowing. CPI inflation was lower. So if you have a few more data points confirming that, then expectations of a much you know faster rate cut cycle could kind of build up, which has already built up, and you could see more conviction on that theme. And then we have to think if that is happening, then across the world, how will other emerging market central banks react? Uh, before the RBI, there could be other central banks in Asia who could be moving to cut interest rates, and that could set the you know tone for uh, you know RBI and other central banks who still haven't taken any decision on rate cuts. So it's kind of fluid at this stage. It, it, it's very uncertain time, and you know we'll see after uh, September what happens with the Fed rate cuts and uh, how things go on from here. And there'll be a continuous threat of geopolitical tensions, which is there around us whether oil prices again go up higher, all these things will play into the minds of all the central bankers that will decide on monetary policy action. Right, absolutely. Uh, Kaushik uh, and Radhika, thank you once again for taking time out for us and we hope to have you back soon enough. Thank you for watching NDTV Profits. Stay tuned, we have a lot more coming up.